right. And we'll have some fun. We'll have a really good conversation. I'm sure most of the people here have watched the show a bunch like me. Oh, Savannah, I got you. Here we go. Hi. Hey, Savannah, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm good, that was such a... No, that was such a crazy message. I've never seen that before. I'm like, oh, Instagram's like yelling at me right now. Yeah, it was so insane. Leave it to me to have a technical issue, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's great to see you, Savannah. I started this show back in March when um, COVID kind of shut the whole world down because I wanted people to have a place every week that they can turn to and just have fun and hear from people they love. And you were one of those people. So thank you oh, for thank being you. here. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. Of course. And all your fans are tuned in. I have their questions. I'll be asking them towards the end of the interview. But if you're ready to rock, we have a lot to get to. Let's do it. Yeah. All right. So first of all, a huge congrats to you on the massive success of your show, Julie and the Phantoms. It is easily one of the most binge-worthy shows on Netflix ever to exist, period. So, Thank you. <laughs> oh my God, it's, it's so much fun. And for shows like this that are kind of whimsical and fun, I'd love to hear from the cast on how you would describe this show. Ooh, to describe the show, I mean, the storyline is about four guys who are in a band in the 90s and on the biggest night of their lives, three of them decide to go grab a quick little snack and they end up dying death by hot dogs. Um, <laughs> fast forward 20 years later, there's a young girl named Julie. She's struggling to find her love for music again after her mom sadly passes away. And she comes across those three boys who are now ghosts and they form a band called Julie and the Phantoms. So it's very, like you said, very whimsical, very fun, definitely something you can sit and watch with the whole family. And it's something that adults also really like. I've had a lot of my friends, like parents reach out to me and say, oh my God, I love the show. It's so good. I, I hope you get another season. So definitely something the whole family can watch. Yeah, I 100% agree. And you play the, you know, mean girl, Carrie, on the show. So how did that opportunity for you come about? What was that audition process like? Did you always kind of have that role in mind? Or did they have that role in mind for you? Or did you try out for other roles? Kind of give me that backstory. Yeah, of course. So my story is kind of interesting and a little confusing. But when I, I first got the audition through my agent, and I remember I, had, I already knew Owen had already booked the show about like a couple weeks prior. And so I remember I was like sitting in my kitchen in Texas. I was visiting family and I was sitting there and I was reading my emails and I saw the audition come across and I was like, oh my God, it's for Julie and the Phantoms. And I like freaked out and I died because Kenny Ortega is someone who I've dreamt of working with since I was about seven years old. And so I was automatically like, when we book in our flight, the audition's on Monday, which was, funny enough, my 19th birthday. Oh, no so, way. Yeah, like a cool way to celebrate a birthday. Also nerve-wracking, because I remember thinking, if I mess this up, this is going to ruin my birthday. <laughs> right. It'll be like the worst birthday ever. So I went to my first round of auditions, and then I think the next day they wanted to see my dance reel. So I sent them a little dance reel. All I had to do for the first round was sing and act, and that was pretty much it. And then the day after that, I found out I had a chemistry read callback the following week with Maddie. And so this is all from my point of view. I did the chemistry read. It was an insane chemistry read. I literally walked in the room and Kenny said, okay, great. We're just going to have you sing an act. We have a whole video of you dancing. So don't even worry about it. I read all the scenes with Maddie and it was just like instant chemistry. We clicked and it was that perfect combination of we didn't like each other and we didn't get along in the scenes, but also have that history of friendship kind of thing mm. that we really needed for Julie and Carrie. And so it was really cool how we just instantly hit it off. And then I went to sing my song and he goes, just remember, no dancing, just sing. And I was like, great, awesome, sounds good. I get to the end of my song cut and I'm about to hold out the last note thinking, okay, I got it, I'm done, it went well. And Kenny just starts clapping a beat with my song. And he goes, now go into a dance break. And I was like, what? And I'm wearing this like little skirt, heels. And so I was just like, listen, I really want this part and I just gotta go for it. So I just did. And the whole room started clapping a beat for me. And I started dancing as hard as I could. And then while I'm dancing, I'm getting out of breath. We're a couple eight counts in. And then he starts clapping again and goes, okay, now go back into the chorus of the song. So then I went back into singing the song and then I get in about a verse or two and then he says, okay, strike a pose, 
get, take in the audience's applause and give Julie a nasty look. So I hit a pose, did that, looked at Julie, and then I was like, what can I do to go over the top to really try and seal this? So I strutted out of the room. Oh my God. <laughs> like left. And I remember I like turned around, they were all laughing, the whole like Netflix execs, everyone. But I looked right at Maddie and I was like, I'm so sorry. I don't want you to think I'm this mean or <laughs> don't yeah. you think I'm like this. And so truly like the craziest, most wonderful audition experience I've ever had. And then I, that following Monday, I didn't think I got it because it had been a few days and I knew that they were starting rehearsals with Carrie soon. And I was like, you know what? I didn't get it, but I got to meet Kenny and it was like a dream come true moment. And then my agent called and told me that I booked it. And then I think it was like in 30, 45 minutes later, Owen had called me and he was like, congratulations. And he put Kenny on the phone and I got to talk to all of them. And it was just like something I'll definitely never, ever forget. Oh my God, what an amazing story. That's incredible, good for you. And you. <laughs> so when you walked onto set that very first day, were you like, man, we are onto something pretty special with the show? Or what was the moment that like, it all clicked where, where you realized how, how big this was gonna be? Yeah, I mean, knowing it was with Kenny, I mean, everything he touches turns to gold. The amount of hits he's made, it's truly unreal. And that's why I've looked up to him my entire life. And so I knew going into it, it had potential to be something huge, just having him attached to it and his little like Kenny magic touch. Um, and then seeing the cast work every day and getting to hear them sing and watch them act. I was like, wow, this can actually be something pretty big. But the first time I like genuinely was in awe was we were on set and the band was filming Bright. Mm. And it was the first time I had ever seen the band do anything other than just like a rehearsal. And it was the first time I saw them perform together. And I remember I was sitting by the monitors and I walked in right as they started filming. And just the lights and the way that they interacted with each other, I had full on goosebumps. And it was that moment that I knew this was something really, really special. And that was like the moment I felt so lucky to be a part of it, just to witness it in the same room. It was like magic. Oh my God, the way you describe it, I feel like I have goosebumps. That's so cool. <laughs> Good, I'm glad you do. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. And um, I mean, your character, Carrie, is so much fun to watch. Like, it, you don't know where she's, where it's going, what she's going to do. I mean, she's a blast. So what are some of your favorite things about getting to play Carrie? Oh, so many things. You know, being such a fan of High School Musical growing up, when I first read the script, it reminded me so much of Sharpay Evans. And Sharpay was my favorite character in the High School Musical series. And so I remember reading the script and being like, okay, I definitely want some Sharpay, Sharpay influence in there, but I don't want it to be a photocopy. I want Carrie to kind of be her own person, but still someone that people my age could relate to and kind of remember back from their youth. And so some of my favorite things about playing Carrie, I love her witty one-liners, like the Heimlich line at the school dance was one of my favorite things to do. I loved all of the little banter I had between Jada and Maddie and Sasha. Just those like little witty sarcastic moments, but still being able to play that inner she's hurt and she doesn't really know how to express it. So that's kind of her coping mechanism. So it was definitely like a new challenge because I've always wanted to play the mean girl, but it was one that I was like so stoked for. Yeah, she's a great character and you have such great scenes in season one. What are some of your favorites that you'll always remember that, you know, holds a special place in your heart? Ooh, so many. Um, one that definitely holds a special place in my heart was filming All Eyes on Me. Um, mm. That was my favorite song out of the two numbers I got to do, which I was so lucky that I was able to do two full numbers as like Carrie and Dirty Candy. That was so surreal. And to have it on the soundtrack was like, un it was unbelievable. But filming All Eyes on Me was definitely special because um, my friendship with Owen, I've known him since I was 16. My first project was Night Squad, which was the show we were on together prior to this. And the fact that they added him to that number and we got to have this whole little moment. It was a full day of filming and I just remember having such a blast with him. And so that one definitely holds a special place in my heart. But another one that kind of sticks out to me is when we're at uh, Carrie's Mansion and we're with Jada and Sasha and Maddie and Jada goes on this whole 
the spiel about a raccoon in her backyard and she's trying to distract us from Maddie or from Julie. And I remember like the first couple takes we did it, I didn't know J where Jada was going with that story. And then it turned <laughs> into like a raccoon in her backyard and she had a picture of it. And I remember just like struggling not to laugh. It was like one of the hardest things to get through, but definitely one of my favorite moments. Oh, I bet. It must be so hard to keep a straight face because you guys have such great lines. The writing in the show is amazing. <laughs> It's so much fun. Um, and of course, you get to play Julie's rival, which that's a lot of fun to watch that unfold. So how did you guys establish your dynamic? You know, you booked the role, you guys are talking about your characters together. Like, how did you figure out how you were gonna play it with one another? Yeah, so during the, like the final callback, I remember Kimmy really worked with me and Maddie on the scenes prior to me even auditioning. He just kind of like, pulled us in the room and then said, okay, here's kind of a backstory, but you guys can kind of come up with whatever you want. But we, it's definitely the fact that they were friends and something happened. They had a falling out, whether that was due to Carrie or Julie or whatever happened, you know, that's something that you guys can kind of figure out on your own, but this is how it's definitely going to be played. And I remember I went out to Vancouver right after I got cast and went out for about nine days to record the songs and rehearse and uh, do a camera test for hair and makeup, all those fun things. And Maddie asked me to go to coffee with her. And so we went right outside my hotel and we sat there for about two hours talking about not only our characters, but ourselves. And so mm -hmm. we got to know each other on a deeper level as Savannah and Maddie. But then it came to the time where we actually talked about Julie and Carrie's backstory and why do we think they had a falling out and it really helped us get in touch with those characters before filming so then our first day which is I think the first scene we filmed was the first time you meet Carrie and Julie in the hallway and that scene it was just so easy to film because it was like okay we already created this whole major backstory just between the two of us and that way it was able to play on camera so it was definitely something that we were both excited for and we couldn't wait to try and like dive with each other. Yeah, you really can feel like history between the two of you when you're watching the show. You don't know what exactly happened, but you feel this huge, huge history, which is a testament to the job that you guys did. It's awesome. Well, thank you. We did it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And I know you mentioned Owen, too, and that you guys had worked together on, on um, you know, earlier shows. And then you do this show together and you get that phone call from him when you book this show. So, man, how has that friendship evolved for you guys and working together on this specific project? What has that been like? You know, it's definitely been something so crazy. And when we were on Night Squad together, when we found out it was canceled, we were all upset for a lot of different reasons. We all had a blast. Making, but it was also the time period where we were, you know, 18, 19 years old and kind of hitting that point in an actor's career of like, you want to transition from a kid's network to something a little bit more adult or, you know, a little bit more of a um, larger age range. And so I remember when it, we got canceled, we rapped, and Owen and I were already really great friends off of set. We have a lot in common. You know, we grew up major musical theater kids, both grew up in southern states, and so we have a lot to relate on. Um, and so when we found out it was canceled, it was definitely sad. And I just remember thinking, like, oh, I won't get to work with you anymore. That's, that's not good. Like, I was just really <laughs> upset about it. Um, and then when he booked Julie and the Phantoms, I didn't even know there was a role in it that I could fit. I just remember him telling me he booked it and I was so thrilled for him because I was like, dude, you get to sing and play the drums, two things you're incredible at and you get to showcase that. I was so proud of him. And then a couple weeks later when I got the audition, I remember both of us being like, wait a minute, okay, this might happen. <laughs> and so there was like a lot of nerves going into that audition, but that was also a big part of it. And yeah, our friendship has definitely evolved in a lot of different ways. I also think because you know, we grew up together. We met when we were both 16, and now we'll both be t turning 21 later this year. So it's crazy to see how time's just flown by and to see how we've both grown up in different ways, and especially in our acting. I think we've both grown. And I know definitely just from watching him on set, even during Night Squad, I learned so much from just watching him work. And so, yeah, I think it's definitely just evolved, but in, like, the best way possible. That's so nice. I think it's such a special thing when you work with people who, who you love. And, and the cast seems like one big family. I've had Owen on the show. I've had Jada on the show. And, and it's just, you can tell that it's not just an on-screen thing. Off-screen as well, you guys are super tight, right? So how is it working with everyone? Who's like the jokester? Who's the serious one? Who's, who keeps you all in line? Give me the breakdown. <laughs> That's a good one. Okay, let's see. 
I mean, it's so okay. hard because I feel like we're all pretty big jokesters, but I feel like we all have our moments. I think Owen is just 24 seven though. Like he's just joking no matter what. Um, I feel like Jeremy kind of keeps us all in line, but he can also have a silly side, but he's more so like, okay, serious, let's get to work. Um, and I, I don't know. I mean, I think we all have a little bit of all of that within us, but yeah. we're definitely one big family. It just clicked and it worked. And there were literally days where we'd wrap on set and then we'd all like go out to dinner or on our days off, we all want to spend time with each other, which typically on your like one day off of the week, you kind of want to just like chill at home and keep to yourself. But there was never a day where any of us wanted to do that. We'd be like, let's go hiking or let's go out to eat. Or like myself with Charlie Owen and Jeremy, we went out and had a trivia night. We went to this like little restaurant and they had trivia night. So we did that. Like there was just so many things we did. And Maddie and Jade and I had a sleepover and we just really connected on so many different levels. And even though there's like a pretty decent age gap between some of us, I mean, we all just clicked and it just became this one big, like happy family. Insane. That's so cool. I love that. And it shows. I always believe you can watch a show and you can tell when people genuinely all get right. along and, and have that rapport. And I think it's awesome that, you know, this show has that. Um, and, and the show has so many great messages. I think everybody can pull something from this show. So for you, what's a message that you hope people walk away with after they watch Julie and the Phantoms? You know, I, I'm a very big believer and advocate for always going after your dreams and never giving up on them. And I think that's something that speaks so true to our show. You know, it starts off with the boys and they don't get to live out their dream, but even when they're ghosts, they never want to stop and they want to find that dream again. And then with Julie, you know, she lost her mom, lost her love for music, but then she decides to go after it again with the guys. So I think that's such a huge message in our show is to never give up on your dreams and to always go after them. Even though things might get hard or you might lose the love for it, never stop dreaming for those things. And I, I really hope that's something that people pull away from our show just because I know a lot of people can get discouraged and you know people can be mean nowadays too and make you not want to do it and make you think that you're not good enough but I don't know I feel like that's when you really go after it and show them that you are good enough and that you can do it so definitely just to always follow your dreams and never give up on them yeah that's a great reminder for all of us and, and like you said it's a message that no matter where you are in your life we never should forget that right yeah exactly yeah, I, I think that's great. And okay, so your character in a hopefully season two, where do you want her to go? Like, what do you, what do you want to happen for her? Give me like your dream. Ooh, so if we were lucky enough to get a season two, I, there's a lot that I'd like to see from Carrie. I, I'd love to see her have like a breakdown moment, you know, kind of humanize her in a way, I think. She's just, she has that cold exterior and I want to see someone break that down. And I'd love to see her maybe do a soft number instead of all of these like super in your face. And even though that's very carry, I'd love to see like a moment of her just by herself and singing something that's so heartfelt. Um, I'd love to see, absolutely love to see um, a relationship kind of form between her and Julie, even though it'll never be what it used to be. They'll probably never be best friends again. Something to where they're more allies than enemies and maybe even team up, work on music, something to where they kind of form that friendship again. Those are so, like a few things. I have a lot of ideas for season two if we were able to get one, but those are just like a few things I'd love to see for Carrie. Yeah, I would love to see a really vulnerable moment, right? Like stripped down, this is who she is, and maybe a little insight into why she's like that, right? Yeah, and I'd love to see her reaction if she ever found out what happened with Bobby and the boys. I'd love yeah. to see her find out that her dad did all those things because I feel like she lives with this major pressure of trying to live up to her dad's name. And if she found out most of that was fake, I think that would be a huge breakthrough moment as Carrie, like, becoming a little softer, kind of letting that pressure go off of herself. I'd love to see that happen. Yeah, oh my God, you just got me excited for hopefully a season two. A lot of good <laughs> ideas right there. I love that. Listen, I got ideas. <laughs> yes, I love that. Um, and working with Kenny, you mentioned him earlier. I mean, what an icon. Everything he touches turns to gold. So like when you realized you were working on a Kenny Ortega project, what was that moment for you? <laughs> I cried. Um, oh, okay. Just like lost it. I, I've never really gotten emotional over 
booking a job or anything. I've just always been like very excited or kind of anxious to get started. But when I got that call, I just burst into tears. My mom took a photo of me when I got the call and I just like fell to my knees and was like, done. I don't know. I just, I've looked up to him my entire life. I started off as a dancer and knowing his iconic choreography as well as his directing, I knew him as a dancer and choreographer first. So I dreamed of just dancing in one of his shows, but the fact that I booked it with a role and a role that I've always wanted to play and just surrounded by this incredible story and music, it was like an absolute, I know I always say this, but a complete dream come true moment. And it was something that I honestly still pinch myself over. And yeah. now I think about it and I, I see him and I'm like, oh, it's Kenny. But then I sit and I think about it I'm like, oh, wait, it's Kenny. Like, it's Kenny, <laughs> Kenny, Kenny. And it's just like so insane because I, I used to watch the um, one thing I always did was watch the rehearsal footage from the high school musical movies and like the behind the scenes. Oh, and I yeah. loved to watch him work. And I had this moment in Vancouver when we were in rehearsals and I was learning the dance. And he came up to me and he was like dancing with me, showing me what Owen was gonna do. And I had this like, whoa, like full 360 moment of this, like I, I did it, like I'm here and it's happening. And it was like absolute chills, it's insane. Good for you. I mean, you, you put in the work, you, you brought this role to life, you deserve all of the success. That's amazing. I love it. Good for you. What a great story. Um, all right, I'm gonna get to some fan questions now. So these were the most popular fan questions I received that I, I grouped together. Um, and the first one, no surprise, you kind of touched upon this already, but have you heard anything at all about a potential season two? Not one thing. I am just like you guys. I'm sitting here waiting. I saw something on Twitter or like a post that someone said Netflix announced it. And I was like, they did? <laughs> and I was like, wait, I think I would know maybe. <laughs> right. So yeah, I'm just like you guys. I have no clue. I know that they're, they've been like playing with ideas and storylines and everything. But as far as official or any idea when we might, I have zero clue. <laughs> Okay, hopefully soon. We're all keeping our fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah. And we know I'm sure you'll announce it once, you know, you hear something. Oh, for sure, I'm going to be blowing it up. <laughs> good, good, good. Good vibes. I have good feelings about good this. Vibes. So, yes. Um, favorite ship on the show? That was the most second most popular question. Ooh. I always say Willix. I'm a huge Willix fan. I, you know, I love Luke and Julie. And, or Juke, I guess. But I, I love how they're starting off such great friends and super mm. close. So I kind of want to, I want them to stay like that for like a little bit longer and maybe evolve into something really beautiful. But Willix, y'all, I'm the biggest Willix shipper. I think I'm the captain of the ship. I genuinely like love all of their scenes together. I think Boo Boo and Owen have incredible chemistry. And yeah. they just like, they look really, they fit well together. So I'm a big Willick shipper for sure. <laughs> yeah, I hope they explore that um, in hopefully season two. I want to see more of that, right? Oh, for sure. I'd love to see more of that. I know Owen spoke on something about maybe adding a little bit of drama in there with the two of them. I think that would be interesting. But I, I'd love more Willick scenes, like the museum the whole museum episode where they're like screaming yeah. together in it. That's like such a sweet moment and it's so cute. Yeah, I just love Willix. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, that's so cool. Um, a lot of questions about any special memories or behind the scenes stories that haven't really been talked about that are special to you. Ooh, that haven't been talked about. That's a good they're, one, I'm trying to think. They want the scoop. They want the scoop, scoop. Mm -hmm. Oh, because I'm trying to think of, like, good stories that I've never told from set. Hmm. That's a that good tough. one. That's a tough one. That is a really tough one. Oh, my goodness. I'm trying to think of, like, a good one that I've never talked about. Because I have so many that I've talked about, but, like, everybody knows of. Um, I think, I mean, everybody knows about the Halloween party we had. That was, like, a really fun night. That was an absolute blast. And Maddie was the one who came up with the idea for it. I don't know if people know that. Maddie came up with the idea for a Halloween party. And I remember, um, oh, this kind of ties into a story that a lot of people don't know. So I, I had just finished like another little insert of Make Them Say Wow. And so I had on like all the makeup and everything like that. We had the Halloween party. It was a great night. And then our next day was our day off. And I woke up and we had been filming Make Them Say Wow for like the past two days. 
I woke up with like a rash on my face and like all over everywhere. And it was just awful. And then the next two days it got even worse. And it just like spread all over my face. I looked like a chipmunk. My no. face was like, like red dots. My eyes were swollen shut. I had to go to the doctor and get antibiotics immediately. It's not a fun story, but it's like, <laughs> a funny one. Um, Cause in certain episodes or certain moments, you can kind of see my face a little bit puffy. And that's why, cause I was like hyped up on Benadryl trying to get that allergy down. There's like one part of filming, I don't really remember cause I was so sleepy from the medicine. I was oh my like, God. so done. But yeah, that was like, it's a funny story now. And that's why I know a lot of fans know this, but that's why Charlie thought I was allergic to hot yoga. Cause he invited me to go do hot yoga one day. And that was the day I woke up with a rash. And I said, oh, I can't, I'm so sorry. I just woke up with a crazy allergic reaction. I need to go get it checked out. All he read was allergic. And he just thought I was allergic to yoga. Oh my God. Don't, don't know why he thought I was allergic to yoga. <laughs> but that's the backstory behind that little moment that a lot of fans know. So I had an allergic reaction to the makeup, not yoga. <laughs> Good to know. Thank you for clearing that up. You know, Finally because that up. <laughs> that's, that's hysterical. And speaking of Charlie, I, I got a lot of questions about teams and what teams you're on. And people okay, want to know. I think, I think this is the Twitter thing people are talking about right it's now. It's the Twitter thing. It's blowing up like crazy. And they want to know, I guess there's three teams that they created. And, and I think you've said your team, Charlie and team Owen, and people want to know what team you are. Oh, I might be butchering okay. this. I just started seeing this on Twitter. Oh, that makes sense. Okay, so I saw it, I saw it this morning, and I think I understand it. The, the Twitter fans, they categorize themselves by their age groups. And so I think there's, like, one team that's the Sasha, Maddie, Jada age group, and then there's yes. a team that's, like, Owen and myself, and then there's a team that's Charlie. I responded to a tweet. I didn't know what any of this was, but I responded to like two days ago and someone said can you say team charlie and i was like okay team charlie and then i saw people got upset that i said it because i didn't vote for my own team so i guess i'm <laughs> voting for it now go team owen sav so i guess that's it go owen sav all right there we go it's official i love it um another huge question a lot of people were wondering your favorite songs from the entire series if you could pick your top two aside from yours Okay, aside from mine. I probably wouldn't pick mine. <laughs> <I feel like laughs> no, yours so come on at the gym. Yours come on in my headphones at the gym, and I'm like, okay, yes, <laughs> yes. yes. Thank you. <laughs> um, top two, definitely Now or Never. It's got to be one of the top two. It's one of my favorites. Oh, and another one that's so hard. Ugh. Uh, for my musical theater geek, I feel like I always I, – I pick all the songs anytime I'm asked these questions – but just for like my musical theater self, I'm picking Other Side of Hollywood. I am a huge, I was a huge fan of Cheyenne prior to even doing the show. And I remember when I, Owen told me that he was playing the part and he was like, who's playing Caleb, right? And I was like, no, who? And he goes, Cheyenne Jackson. And I like lost it. It was <laughs> yeah. insane. But he's just like a Broadway legend and icon. And he was fabulous in his numbers. So definitely Other Side of Hollywood. I love it. Good choices. Yeah, Cheyenne's great. He came on the show, too. He's just such a great talent. Yeah, he's unreal. Like, chills every time he does anything. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, so, so talented. Um, and then one non julie the Phantoms question. You just filmed the movie, and a lot of people are curious about that. So anything you can share? Yeah, um, I think I, I can share, like, what's out there right now. Um, it's called Keep Moving. It's a very, very heavy dance film. I think it's the most dance I've ever ever done in any project number one but it's the most dance i've done in years in such a short amount of time and so my body was going through it while filming but yeah. it was like one of the most incredible experiences i've ever had and i think it's it's definitely very real and grounded acting and it's the most grounded i've ever been in a project so it was definitely like the next step of an actor and definitely a lot more real like real and heartfelt and just something that a lot of people can relate to. And our director, Nayib, he was truly incredible. It was his first time directing like a feature film. And I think he just nailed it on the nose. Like truly incredible. Our cast is fantastic. Um, Maria, she's was the mom on Wizard Waverly Place. A lot of you may know her. Um, she's in the cast. She was 
um, incredible to work with. Uh, Gunner, I worked with him on another movie called Secret Lives of Cheerleaders, like two years ago to the day almost of filming this one together. And he's in that again too. So definitely like a stellar cast, an incredible director. And it was a project that I'm like so stoked about and I cannot wait to be able to tell more and like show pictures. And yeah, I'm like, so over the moon about this project you have no idea it's exciting <laughs> oh congrats good for you a lot of people are very excited and, and we can't wait to hear more about that um and before i let you go you know i think that it's so cool that so many of your fans look up to you and you're somebody who puts out really great messages and i was reading a lot about you know from prior interviews things you've said and there's something that really stood out to me that i want to share um and it was your view on social media and you said that you can feel this pressure to try and represent yourself a certain way to gain a bigger following. But my life motto is always be yourself. And I want people to see the real me on my social media accounts, not some version to just please others. I love that. I know you have a lot of, a lot of people who follow you who are a bit younger as well. And I think it's a message really any age needs to be reminded of. So talk to me a bit about this a little more. Yeah, exactly. I mean, when I first moved out to LA, prior, when I was just in Texas, social media was just a way to like show what you were doing and what you were up to. And then I moved out to LA and it opened up a whole nother view on social media for me. And it was suddenly this image of girls my age trying to be something that they weren't to gain the likes, to gain the comments, the followings, just everything to gain more attention from it. And at one point, I never fully fell into that rabbit hole. But at one point, I started really criticizing pictures I would take and think, oh, I don't look, I don't look that great in that one. Or, oh, I don't like the way my face looks in that one. And I started realizing that I was doing this at such a young age. I mean, I was 16, 17. And I was like, I'm already doing this to myself at this age. And this is really tearing on my like mental health. I need to, you know, realize what I actually doing Instagram and social media in general is just another way to connect with people all over the world. And I think it's turned into this kind of toxic form of showing people what you have or what you want or trying to show a life that maybe you're not really living. And I think that that's something that a lot of our younger generation needs to learn. Not everybody's perfect. Not everybody has like the snatch waist and like the perfect figure. And I think that's something that, you know, our, younger generation needs to really look up and see and that it's not perfect life is not going to be perfect and you shouldn't try and be something you're not just to please everyone else around you and that's when I've always my aunt always told me before any audition she always would just text me and say just be you and so I live by that every single day of my life and you know, I think even when you're in like a crowd of people, you can start to form your personality to match theirs or their energy. And I don't know, I feel like that's really going against the whole message of you're put on this earth as yourself for a reason. And right. so why try to be anything else that you're not? So always just like be yourself, love what you love, love who you want to love and just do it for you. Don't do it to try and please and get approval of others. Man, that is a reminder for everybody at any point of their life. And yeah. I love that you put that out there. I think it's something that we should hear over and over again. Rock on. I am here for it. Thank love you. it. And Savannah, before I let you go, I know this show came out during quarantine, right? It was like the lockdown and, and you haven't really gotten to fully experience this wonderful journey with your fans in real life yet. So for everybody tuned in who's been supporting you and cheering you on and forever a fan and, and following your career for the rest of your life now. What do you want to say to everybody? Oh my gosh, just the biggest thank you. I mean, like I said earlier, I knew coming onto the show that it was going to be something special, but that was just from us working on it. I did not realize how special it would be once the show came out and we met so many incredible fans just through social media and to see their constant love and support of the show and the fact that they're fighting so hard for a season two i've never seen a fan base of any show be so determined as ours and it truly does mean the world to all of us i mean they have no idea we talk about it with each other all the time and we're just blown away so i just let all of you know please know that we truly love you guys with like all of our hearts so much you have no idea how much it means to all of us it truly does mean the absolute world to have all of your love support and determination and 
just the fact that you guys want our show to succeed so much it's truly surreal so just know like i wish i could give all of you a big hug but <laughs> so i'll give a virtual one but just know that we all love you guys so much and we can't thank you enough oh well i know that means a lot to them savannah i have loved getting to hang out and chat with you today <laughs> i had a I blast it. thank you for having me it's so you're much so fun. much fun i feel like i've known you forever i know this is great <laughs> well i hope the next interview will be in person once everything passes and we're all safe and healthy and i will be following your career and i wish you nothing but the best thank you for coming on the show thank you for having me thank you guys all right be well bye bye, -bye.